Well, you know what? We're here to talk about social media. But before we start, you know, we want to judge our audience. First part about social media is knowing what your audience is. So let me hear how many people have recruited somebody through social media. Lauren, you realize that we used to be scared to death just to ask how many people are on social networking. I know, it's now true. people are actually sponsoring and duplicating themselves on social media. It's an amazing thing and, and generating leads. And one of the things I want to ask them is how many of you are on Twitter? Should be louder, should be louder, but that's okay. How many of you are on Facebook? How many of you on Facebook searching for boyfriends or girlfriends? <laughs> yeah. Don't let me hear about that. <laughs> How many of you on Instagram? How many of you are following motives in our company on Instagram? How many of you are following us on Instagram? And if you're not, you should have your mobile phones and start following right now. Because what we're gonna teach you in the next 50 minutes, because I'm going to be on time even if we have to stop early, because I am notorious for going late. We're gonna get through this, but I want you to be connected. I want you to be connected to the world. Why? Because it's going to connect you to customers. It's gonna connect you to people. We're gonna make it real simple. That's Today right. is a real simple morning. All you have to do is follow these simple steps. I mean, the thing is, is that there's leads everywhere to be had. All it is is a matter of taking what you do off, um, online, offline and applying it to online principles. It's about going on to Facebook, Twitter, and the different um, platforms and actually making a brand of yourself. You know, this is a free marketing tool that they provide you that allows you to access billions and billions of people that can then be put into the funnel jar as well as you know, new recruits. Absolutely, and I think about this. 93% of network marketers use social media to grow their business. Why? Because it works. It simply works. 46% of online users rely on social media when making a purchase. How many of you have gone to social media to see what other people say before you buy something? We've all done it, haven't we? We've all done it. Of course, social media lead conversion rates are 13% higher than the average lead conversion rate. People are listening to what people say. They're no longer opening up a magazine and looking at print ads, they're no longer watching TV, they care about what you think. That's what people care about. 74% of marketers say Facebook is their most cost-efficient method for lead generation, and we'll talk about that a little bit right. later. Social media produces almost the double, almost double the marketing leads of trade shows, telemarketing, direct mail, or PPC. Guys, if you're not on social media, you're missing it. You're missing out. You're asleep. You can't work this business without being connected to the world. This is how people connect today. Years ago when we started, we built our business right through word of mouth. All social media is, is amplifying word of mouth. So instead of reaching and having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, you can amplify it to hundreds, to thousands, to tens of thousands, and in some cases, millions. But the thing is, is that you have to know your social media platform. You have to know exactly what it's about. Lauren, I always say that one of the worst things that Twitter and Facebook and all the different companies did was that they allowed us to sync our accounts together. And so what's happening was, is, is that I would follow Pam on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram only to get the same message three different times, when really each one of those platforms acts very differently. On Facebook, it's more about what I like and what my interests are. Where in Twitter, it's more about what's happening now, what's the news of the day, things of that sort. And so it's about identifying what that platform is and speaking to that audience directly. And by the way, when you go back real quick, that's a very important slide. This slide will be back in our back office, so you'll be able to see. This is a very simplified explanation of what each one of the platforms is. And as you can see real fast, on Twitter, you're saying, I'm eating a donut. What are you doing right now? If you like something, you like donuts, 
you get the picture, right? This is the difference between social media platforms. Simplified. If you're putting on Instagram, here's a picture of donuts. In this case, a picture of vintage donuts. These are the simple ways for you to identify what the platforms are. That's right. Obviously, Facebook is the number one in the, in the business when it comes to social media. 1.15 billion total users, 751 million of them accessing it at over 7,000 different devices. Now, this is a crazy stat. One out of every five page views on the web is, happen is occurring on Facebook. One out of every five, that's Google, every single site, one out of every five happens on Facebook. 23% uh, of the users log in more than five times a day, and 75% you know, of engagement is posted within the first hour, and actually they have become one of the first mobile first companies, and they just recently reported a humongous first billion dollar company in social media that's mobile only. Yeah. Is there a fire here? I mean, there's so much smoke, I'm like, <laughs> I can't see anybody. <laughs> I felt like there's a fire behind me. I'm like, where is everybody here? At any rate, Twitter, of course, you know, Twitter, the cool thing about Twitter is it's a way to amplify your message. It doesn't matter if someone is following you on Twitter. If you're following them, whatever you say reaches the people that follow them. That's what makes the platform so powerful, and that's why it's grown to over 500 million users in such a short period of time. So you can actually send a message to somebody that you're targeting, and whether they see it or not, the other people who follow them who might have the same like interests as you or them will see it as well. That's the really cool thing. But over uh, 500 million users, 28% of retweets are due to the inclusion of simply asking for a retweet. 75% of users access it from mobile. Mobile is the way to access social media. Average of a 400 million tweets per day, 208 uh, tweets per account, and um, it's one of the fastest ways to buy a product. Launching an in-tweet payment method, making it easy to buy products, right. right. That's what's coming. That's right. So LinkedIn, where every recruiter in America is going on to try to find talent. It's where the, the professionals go to network. Over 3 million LinkedIn company pages with over 1.5 million groups. Now, these groups are, specif are specific to certain in industries. So if you're in cosmetics or cosmeceuticals, you can go on there and literally find hundreds of thousands of groups that are talking about cosmetics from cosmetic industry leaders that you can then talk to, relate to, and connect with. And then later on, by saying, after saying hi, actually, introduce them to well, and what, you would use, what you would use LinkedIn for is simply a way of searching right. it's a great search That's engine right. to find real professionals who are in sales who are in sales right. so if you're looking for people to be on your team it's a great search engine method to find people because these are real professional salespeople a lot of them are used to working as sales managers who are used to working on commission only basis it's a good way to drill down and as Steve said so many people are using this in order to find prospects. That's right. So let's talk about Instagram. Instagram. You know, Instagram, more than 16 billion photos have been uploaded. I mean, Victoria's Secret's Nike, over 2.8 million followers just checking out these photos that are basically taking their campaigns that they're doing on televisions, magazines, etc., and then bringing it back into their online world by constantly sharing those on are Instagram. Are you saying that Victoria's Secrets and Nike are the most followed brand of 2.8 million? Yes. And we're almost 600,000? I, I guarantee you we are going to beat them. We are going to beat them if you don't believe me. And by the way, if you're not doing your job following us, you're part of the problem. Right. <laughs> you have to be following the brands that are yours, the ones that are paying you. If they're only 2.8 million, That's it. we're so close. Do you understand? So we need to make sure, that means that we're in the top 1% for sure. Oh, absolutely. That's amazing. Do so you guys yeah. understand how powerful that is? Do you realize the work it takes? We have given you a multi, multi million dollar business and it costs you like, I don't know, I don't even know how much it costs to start, $109, $129? What does it cost to get in the business? Treat it like a million dollar business. Treat it like a million dollar business and it'll pay you a million times over. Does that make sense to you? It, it, I mean, I just don't understand. It doesn't make any more sense. Right. <laughs>
Okay, Instagram enhances your overall brand image with product offerings, fulfilling promises made, curate content ranging from loosely branded to uh, product specifics. Uh, this is not really, I hate to read from a slide. Instagram is real simple. It is a way to tell a story. People like pictures. Okay, when you post pictures, you can tell a story. So if you're focused on losing weight and transitions, you can post your before and afters. If you're focused on makeup, look what Motives does. It's a perfect platform. Follow any one of the Mavens. You can see how they use it, before and afters. People love to see a story. Before and afters tell the story. Use Instagram for that. Share the story with them. You have isotonic, show them how it makes you healthy. Transition, show them how it's making you lose weight. Makeup, show them how it transforms you. I can't give you any other reason to use it except to use it. Does that make sense? It makes so much sense, guys. People love pictures. You know, we're gonna talk about Google Plus, and there's really only three things I wanna I want share with you about Google Plus. Couple things, one, make sure that you're posting on it because it is the most search-friendly social media site in the world. Everything that you're doing is getting indexed, getting put in, so that what happens is, is, is that if me and Keith are friends, and I post something on Google Plus, when he actually, if that is something that he is also searching for, that post is actually gonna come up in a search index on Google for Keith showing that I shared something that is of interest to him through that topic. Key point. Also, make sure that you are utilizing both Meet On as well as their Hangout features, both of which go hand in hand very well together. These are multi-million dollar platforms that are given to you free of charge. Absolutely. As well as always make sure that you're following the big brands. The reason for it is, is that much like I told you about that Keith and my scenario, it also happens when it comes to companies. So when I'm following a company, there's when only I nine, search for, There's only 993 followers. I know, that's disappointing. But is that my fault? Or should we be doing a better job promoting what our business is? Right. Don't you think everybody has a part in that? Yes or no? Right. Seriously, I want you guys to realize how important it is to your business. It really doesn't matter if you follow me or not. It doesn't because I'm going to build my brand anyway. I'm going to build my business anyway. I want you to follow it so you have something to learn from. You can nab and grab and steal the material and put it up as if you did it. That's Does right. that make sense to you? I don't want you to have to reinvent the wheel. I want you to take what I've given you and repost it like it's yours. Steal it. Do whatever you want with it, but you can't steal it if you're not following it. Does that make sense? That's Does right. that make sense to you guys? This is so important. Everybody seems like they're asleep right now. This is a freebie. It's a freebie. Everybody must be focused on social media. That's how we started through word of mouth. All we're doing is the exact same thing, but we're amplifying the message. Right. You know, just a few more stats, you know, YouTube, great way to be exposed, over 1 billion unique visitors, you know, 4.2 million are utilizing mobile phones, 60% of consumers say the integration of social media yeah. makes them more likely to share a product or a service. It's got to be everywhere. Brand engagement, here's the way it works. You want somebody to say, I've seen your brand. The next step is, I've engaged with your brand. They're communicating with you. They're listening to you a little bit. They now trust you enough to provide them contact, provide their contact information. And then the ultimate goal, of course, is for them to purchase your product. But there are steps in between. Step four doesn't happen until step one, two, and three happen. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, turning that customer into an advocate, a loyal customer, a brand ambassador, somebody who's talking about your brands like I did with all the mavens, with all the beautiful girls right behind there in the second row. There they are, they're brand ambassadors. They're promoting your brand. The same exact thing you have to be doing and the same thing you want other people to do and follow in their footsteps. They weren't customers of mine. I had to talk them through it. I had to explain it to them. I had to get them engaged by seeing my brand first. I had to get them to say, hey, this is pretty cool. That's what you have to do. It's a simple process. It's the same thing we do offline, but we do it online. Does that make sense? Right. That makes sense to you guys? 
you know, it's all about the exposure. It's all about going through the simple funnel process. It's about exposing you and your brand. What do you offer? What are you interested in? And taking that and taking that exposure and then influencing people who are like-minded about it. You know, whether it be about, you know, a health and nutrition, whether it be about sports, whether it be about news, whatever the case may be, it's about exposing it and influencing somebody enough to want to engage with your brand. It's not just a matter about just post, 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 post. If you're not getting any engagement from it, you have to wonder whether the message that you're sending out may not be the right, might not either be attended to the right audience or the wording of it is incorrect. So you got to make sure that the engagement's there and then it will convert into lead generation. It's all about creating traffic, capturing leads, and converting them into sales. And that's what we're talking about today. You know, but the thing is, is that we live in a very noisy world. When we go on our social networks, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of posts that are being updated all the time. How do you separate your message from all of those noise crowd? Well, what the first thing you can do, well, is, is that you can definitely post pictures and videos and things like that, you know, that allow people as they're scrolling to really get, captivate that audience. But the, really, what you have to figure out is, is, is that whether you're one of these two type of people, are you a, cur a content curator? What that means is, is that are you taking content and pulling it from other sources and then repurposing that or reposting that on your site? For example, I am a humongous sports fan as well as a humongous technology geek. Um, if I, you know, if I, you know, I am diehard Red Sox, um, Duke Blue Devils, I know, world champions. Duke as well as Tampa lot of Bay Bucks. A lot of, lot of booze on that one. Listen. Just saying, just A lot just of haters. Let's go, um, <laughs> But, um... The thing is, is that if I only posted about those three teams, then I would, e I would be leaving out a humongous amount of people that I could be reaching. So what do I do is, is that I share articles about what's happening in Major League Baseball, what's happening in the NFL, because I'm trying to find people who want to be interested in that and want to engage with me so that I can start warming them up and just finding out more about them. And by the way, a, a curator by definition is somebody who pulls the most important content all of the co with all the content out there and picks the very best and curates it and reposts it. Okay, so all you're doing is nabbing and grabbing somebody else's that's information. Right. And that's cool, that's okay, that works. What's not cool is to do what he said before when you're on social media and you're stuck in a noisy world and you don't know what to do. Right. What not to do is you don't go on there searching for high school friends unless you're gonna talk to them about the business. That's right. You're not gonna go on there and say, don't tell me two years from now I'm meant to do the business. I just got stuck and I started talking to everybody from my high school reunion and we got stuck talking and talking on Facebook and I never got to do anything and I really meant to use social media to build my business because I really wanted to be successful, but I never did. Because I ended up meeting my ex-boyfriend on there again. Will you believe he got married and had three kids? Come on guys, we want you to do it. We want you to do it. Do you want to do it? Do you want to make it? Do you want to be on the stage making $18,000 a month like these millionaires on the floor? I know you want it. All I want you to do is want it as bad as we want it for you. We want it that bad for you. So a content curator is somebody who is a little bit different and they're both okay. I'm a content creator. I create unique content. I post my own content and other people repost it. So if you see on my blogs, Pam Bowling's excellent at it. She takes my material and reposts it all the time as if it's hers. I love it. She's brilliant at it. Everybody should be doing the same thing. There's many of you who do that, but I like to create unique content so I can be one of those people, if Stephen liked fashion, he would be grabbing my stuff and reposting it. So both of them work. You don't need to say, I'm not a writer. I don't know how to write. I don't know how to go. Don't you know how to go on the internet and steal some information? Do I need to teach you how to hack too? Because I know how to do that. 
I just want you to do it. You know, you really got to look at your profile and say, what does it say about me? You know, am I actually showing off what I am in real life? Or am I trying to hide behind something? So, you know, the first things we always look at is, is the profile picture. That's usually the best indication of how some, uh, somebody's serious about why they're on social media. Now, if this is your profile picture, yeah, it says, I love my dog. I'm probably on here to meet with friends, family, and all that, but I'm probably not serious about anything when it comes to business. I'm here just to network. You're talking then, about my dog. Then you have this one, as I, I like to call the clueless profile. I never follow this person, no. and I never accept them as a friend. No, never. because this is, this is utilizing the default picture and not even taking the time to show somebody who you are. You know, like Lauren said, when somebody sends a friend request to either you or me, when it has that on any site, we, it's an automatic decline for us. Then let's take this one individual, publicly speaking, in front of an audience, has a quote that, is, that matters to him. And now, all of a sudden, when he goes out and tries to attract new people to him, they realize this guy is on here for business, that, he's, that he means business, and that when they engage with him, he's going to probably get right back to them. So you want to make sure that your profile pic says why you are on the different media sites. Now, one thing I can't stand is watching somebody yeah. that even I know putting up a photo that's like 20 years old. Guys, <laughs> I know that photo was from high school. We went to school together. And they still got the photo from 20 years ago, or a little bit more than 20 years ago. The point is this. Be up to date. Be relevant. Share who you are. Put the photo above you today, the one that's most interesting, not the one of the doggy, not the, the, the skeleton picture, I call it the default picture. None of it makes any sense. Who do you think you are? Ask yourself that question. Who am I? What am I trying to portray to others? How do I want others to see me? I ask myself that question every single day. How do I want other people to see me? How do I want to be portrayed? That's how I build my brand and my business every single day, because I want to be better every single day. And every single day, I'll change something and I'll tweak it. You have to adjust things all the time. Be relevant. Define your audience. Who are they? Who are you talking to? Do you specialize in motives? Do you specialize in transitions? Do you specialize in health and nutrition? What do you like? And what do they like? What times are they on social media? What are they struggling with? And can you offer them solutions? This is at the forefront of my mind. This is at the forefront of my mind. One of the things I use all the time is something called Social Sprout. I make everybody on my team use it. Some people use Hootsuite, some other people use I invest like $60 a month in my social media. Big deal. Are you here to be in business for yourself and to make it? Or are you just messing around? You didn't spend all this money to come here for nothing, right? You came here because you want to be on the stage making $18,000 a month, and you can, and you will. But you must invest in yourself and in your business. So what I do is I invest. So if I go to Social Sprout, I can simply do a search in Social Sprout. It takes all of my channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them, and I can do a search and say, I want to buy makeup. And I can find all the people who just wrote I want to buy makeup. Right there, you have somebody who's telling you they want to buy makeup. Do you sell motives? Yes. Will you sell them motives? Yes. No? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Are you being pushy by offering it to them? Are they asking for it? This is so easy, guys. All you have to do is search. Here's this girl, I wanna go out and buy makeup. I wanna go buy clothes. I wanna buy more makeup and clothes. These are all different people. And I can search for whatever I want. And I can drill it down by category. See, somebody who's near me. I can put down the city. I can put down the state. I can do whatever I want. I can search vitamins. I can search health and nutrition. 
I can search for whatever I want and I have it right here in front of me across all my brands. Then I can make sure I can see how I'm doing. I can see who's following me, how my cloud is. I can watch everything. This thing is filled with reports. All that information I told you you want to know, what are they like, who are they, where do they live, what are their interests, what are the things that you have in common, you can find that by spending a little bit of money, like $60 a month. So, so by the way, you can also get on their free plan and you can do it for, so they give you access to so much. If you don't want to invest the $60, then go on their free plan, but do something. Sign up. Run the report because you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. We live yeah. in a mobile world. Yeah, we live in a scroll world. Yeah. You have just a half a second to capture somebody. You got to make sure you have that, in, that intriguing photo or that video that's going to make them want to stop on your post and actually have to 100%. talk to you about it. Let's and talk here's, about the perfect and I'm going to go through these fast. Here's a perfect post. Okay, so keep going, Steve. Just put those all up I'm for coming. me. Okay, so the first one is you want a clear call, call to action. What's your message? What do you want your readers or responders or followers or people to see this to do? Do you want them to like it? Do you want them to comment? Do you want them to retweet it? Ask for it. We just told you a few minutes ago, 68% of the things you ask for, people will do if you ask for them. Ask for the retweet, ask for them to click like. But if you don't put a call to action in, guess what happens? Nothing, nothing. So all you need to do, check your uh, punctuation because on Twitter, you can only use 140 characters. If you wanna have a long URL, you just need to go to bit.ly and shorten the URL. Go to bit.ly.com, take the long URL and your, your, your top of your box where it says www, whatever the site you're on is, paste and copy that into bit.ly and it'll convert it to a little short URL for you. It's so simple. Use questions, facts, figures to engage users. Stop talking about the things that just talk about you. People love to talk about themselves. Let them talk to you, engage with them, ask them questions. Uh, here's another one here. This is what you would do for Google. And I'm not gonna run through all these, Steve, because right. I wanna get to some of the other information. But the point is, we're gonna have these up on the site for you. The most important thing is utilize hashtags in the most important way. Tag specific people that you're trying to get attention. So if you're trying to get somebody's attention who's focused in cosmetics, tag them. See what's trending on the hashtag. See if you can use a hashtag to represent whatever it is that you're talking about. Interact with the audience. If somebody comments on your post because you've done a good job on your post, comment back, respond back. It's called engagement. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute because right. we wouldn't, if somebody asked us a question about our brand in person, offline, you wouldn't ignore them, would you? I mean, you wouldn't ignore them, you'd answer their questions, right? So what I want you to do is do the same exact thing online. We're doing nothing different. People get all confused. Social media is doing the same, 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 same exact thing we do offline, online. That's it, same thing offline, online. When somebody's nice to us and says hello to us, goodbye to us, ask us how we are, and we don't know them, we answer them. We engage, that's all we want you to do. You know, we live in a give, 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 take world. That's the success to social networking. You know, I know that anyone probably here is gonna sit there and say, when you just talk to somebody, and the first thing that they say is talking about the business. We don't just simply talk about the business when we just simply meet somebody. We actually interact with them. We actually give them something to think about. You know, in social networking, you know, it's about giving some content to then earn the respect and earn the right to take them somewhere. I love these examples from Walmart. It's simply, you know, th you know, they give, give when it comes to, you know, talking about what a lemon does and other uses for it. Then it says true or false, and it talks about the yogurt and their workout. And then finally, they ask for the sale on a new computer. They don't just simply say, here's a link, go buy it. Here's a link, go buy it. Here's a link, go buy it. They say, I'm gonna give you information. I'm gonna give you something you can use. And then I'm gonna ask you for the sale. And they're also 
very importantly, engaging with them. Right. When you say, when I say give, give, take, give, give is more not about me and nothing about I want. I want to hear from you. I'm giving it to you. I'm going to give it to you again. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your feedback. And take is when you're offering them something, but you're going in soft, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. So for instance, when Walmart, I mean, Target just posted late last night about uh, Peter Pilato's new collection that's coming out. Peter Pilato is a very expensive designer, but Target has a way of coming out with those same great designers for, you know, not even like, I don't know, one-tenth the cost or something, and they sell out overnight and nobody can get their hands on it. How about letting people know that they can buy that same outfit from Target from you and get cash back? How about right. telling those people they can get Peter Pilato from you and earn cash back? So all you have to do is go on Target's website and take their last post, again, nab and grab, steal the information. This is not revolutionary stuff. You're gonna nab and grab the information, pop it up on your site, remove their link and put yours and say, by the way, you can get this right now and you can get 2% cash back. Don't you think you're helping people out by doing that? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to create content, you can steal it. Remember I talked about when I did my opening speech the other day, I talked about we're gonna cheat. <laughs> this is cheating, that's okay. It's in a good way because we're helping people. Does that make sense to you? Wouldn't you rather buy the same dress from Target online and get 2% cash back, get a better deal, not have to drive to the store, don't worry about filling up your car with gas, driving around looking for a parking space, going inside, can't find anybody to help you, and then you got inside and all of a sudden the whole line sold out anyway. Mm -hmm. That stinks. Or they don't have your size. Or the one you wanted. The internet curates everything in one place. I never go to stores. I don't like them. I don't like to talk to people who don't know where to direct me. I don't like to talk to a salesperson who tells me, hold on, I'm on the phone, and she's talking to her boyfriend on the other line. I don't want to wait in line for somebody to do a return because it takes too long. I don't want her to mess up on my credit card and she's making me wait because she has to redo 40 items. That's no fun. So all I'm telling you to do is do it online and share the information with people who want it. This collection sells out in 24 hours. You don't think anybody wants it? Of course they do. And yet you can offer it to them for, 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 with cash back. You know, here's some just pieces of great content that gives and gives and shows some engagement. You know, here is a great one. This was um, Jim um, put out something on Shane in reference to him reaching $100,000 in total commission. Now look at this, 426 likes. People who liked it on their page as well as over 34 comments were done on just this one post. Now the great thing about those likes is, is that those are now then carried on to those individuals pages which is now expanding the reach of just this one simple thing so that they can see how people are making money within Market America this is another one why I love that why I love network marketing and it talks about working in their PJs never have to put makeup on every day things like that fun little things that actually engages people into the business that gets them to want to talk and find out more about and by what the you're way, doing did you notice I, I liked that yes engagement I'm just asking you to do the same exact thing I do every single day it works trust me it works you know bottom line is don't be spammy in some cases I like to say don't be scammy either yeah because sometimes the way that what you post is a reflection on you and your brand and your business yeah. Don't sit there and over-promise and under-deliver. Make sure that what you're, what you're putting in there is direct and to the point. Most people will try to use sites like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn to look for prospects and eventually spam them rather than utilizing the tools to connect and develop the relationships first, giving them the real value. That is what it's about. That's what these social networks are all about, is developing that. If you can't be positive, just be quiet. <laughs> right. If you can't be positive, just be quiet, right. folks. Nobody cares. People don't care about how much you know, they care about how much you care. They care about how much you care. Nothing nice to say, be quiet, it's simple. 
You know how to do that, right? All I'm asking you to do is be super nice and engage with them. And we know how to do that, right? Because we have everything we need in order to offer to the people. We know what they want. I'm teaching you how to search for it. I'm showing you tools. We're showing you tools that you can use to engage. You know, and the great thing is, is that if you got writer's blog, there's so many different ways in which you can find content. You know, you can go on such sites as like an all top to where Guy Kiyosaki actually shows you thousands and thousands and thousands of articles in all these different areas that you can actually pull from and actually put on your social media. If you know, you're also on Twitter and you're thinking, man, what do I want to post about? Why not start with what is hot? What is trending? Everywhere in that top, it's usually left-hand corner. There is what is trending. Find out what the key hashtags I mean, are, piggyback on that, and actually utilize that hashtag. And they can steal from those. They can steal of from course. ours. They can steal from mine. They can steal from Market America. I mean, they can go to their sites, but they can steal from us, too, and it makes it simple. That's right. I mean, the big thing is, is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to get your edge rank on Facebook and social networkings higher. Now, what is edge rank? Edge rank is basically um, Facebook's variation of an algorithm, just like Google. Google does that gives you that weights your content heavier than other people. The more popular you are, the higher rank you have. Realize that when you may have 20,000 fans on your page, but you are usually only reaching 5 to 10% of that with each post. You're never reaching the full 20,000. The reason for that is, is that they are trying to put your message through that crowdsource, but they're also trying to elevate other areas. So in order to reach as many of your fans as possible, you have to repeat your message three to five times a day, sometimes three to five times a week as well. The reason for it is, it's just like, you know, I always bring up the analogy of when you go to watch CNN or you watch ESPN. And Tony, you know this, ESPN will sit there and they'll show their top stories 25 times within one hour. Why is that? Because some people might not be up when ESPN first started or when the news came on. So they got to keep repeating that content and the top information. You should be doing the exact same thing. Oh my God, thing. you can ask me. You can ask me what the news is any time of day and I know because they repeat it so much. Yeah. And that's all I watch. But anyway, promote content to your followers. Do you know that you can promote a post for $5 on Facebook? $5. Are you willing to invest $5 to invest in yourself? Are you? Because I need to hear it from you because I don't need you to do it for me. Are you willing to invest $5 in yourself? Are you serious about your business? $5. Guys, most people waste $5. $5 with the right content can boost your business. You know, now, wait a minute. Oh, just go back yeah, a second, sure, Steve. I thought you were going to talk that through. So it's no. just simply at the bottom of each post. If you put up a strong post like the one that Shane put up about we hit, uh, what was it? 100,000 uh, in commissions. 100,000 in commissions. I would have promoted that post for $5. Right. Why? Because it expands his reach. Don't do it on the fact that do you like how my dog's haircut looks? <laughs> Unless you just want a bunch of people who like dogs to follow you. Do it with something that matters. Do you think people care about how somebody made $100,000 in four weeks? Yeah or no? Would that irritate your neighbors? If you were making $100,000 a month, would that bother your neighbors? Would that make people ask you questions? Do people ask you guys questions how you make millions of dollars? The ones down here? Yeah or no? Everybody, is everybody awake today? Because I feel like you guys are asleep. Are you sure? Okay. So all you have to do is invest $5 and promote your post. And by the way, you get great analytics on Facebook. And if it doesn't work, it tells you everything that you did that you could have done better. Read the analytics. They're pretty easy for understand. You don't have to be a rocket science to find Facebook, to figure out Facebook. You certainly found your ex-girlfriend, your old boyfriend. You found the people from high school reunion. You've been talking to people on there forever. Now it's time to talk to them about business. Does that make sense? I always say, I'm like, what? When I see my husband on Facebook too long, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? 
who are you talking to on there? He's like, nobody. I'm like, who is that chick writing you? He's like, no, 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 it's somebody I met a long time ago. She's writing me just saying that she's like thrilled with our success. And I'm like, dude, don't have a conversation unless you're gonna get her in the business. <laughs> don't even think about having a conversation. Cause you know I'm smarter than that. I don't have time to talk to people who don't want to talk about the same things I have an interest in. All of my friends, we all have the same interests. We want to succeed. We want to make money. We want to help other people. We want to make a difference. We know that by being successful and helping other people successful, we automatically succeed. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do. All of this stuff before you hit send. It's so simple, right? Yeah. The most important thing you need to do, proofread your content. What's the intent of the message? Is it interesting? Is it compelling? Is it unique? Do people want to hear it? Or are you asking them dumb things? That's what it comes down to. Right. You have so much interesting content. Use it. You are here this weekend. You have arrived. Everybody in this room is going to be on stage. People want to know how. Everybody wants to know how. Ask for the like. You know, watch for things like autocorrect. You know, we all do it. We're on our iPhone. We're posting it up. It autocorrects. Make sure you're checking those type of things. Oh, and check hashtags. You know. I love this one. Make sure you check hashtags so you're not the only one at the game that got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> check hashtags. You don't want to be the only one at the game. You can find out so much information. Anytime I'm running to a concert and I'm going to a concert and like, for instance, Jay-Z and Beyonce have been in concert so much lately and he guys shows up like two hours late. And I'm like, man, I don't want to go sit at a concert. I got to wait for Jay-Z and Beyonce for two hours. Sorry. I don't like them that much. My time's way too valuable. Okay? So what I do is I go on social media and I hear what people said at the concert the night before to see what time they came out. And I'm not leaving my house till I find out what time they came on. Does that make sense? Use hashtags. You'll get that information. You know, the shelf life of a social media link is only three hours. That's why you got to repeat it over and over and over again to make sure that you're covering all the different time zones. It's not just to make sure that you get all your followers and while well, I'm reading about it, but it's also to make sure you get all those time zones as well. And that's very, very important, by the way. I, people say to me all the time, do you ever sleep? No, I actually really don't. This morning I went to bed at 5.30, had to be up at 6.30. And by the way, you sleep when you're dead because we got a lot to do while we're alive, okay? So we can sleep when we're dead. I always tell people, I don't have time. I don't have time to be successful. Well, then sleep less. Because if you want to succeed, sometimes something's got to give. Something's got to give. You know what I'm saying? You got to give up something in order to succeed. So sleep less. That's what you have to do. And I say that sincerely. Because being a mother is important to me. Being there for my grandson is important for me. Being there for my husband is important for me. I want to do all the things you want to do. And I get to do them. So the sacrifice is real simple. I always tell when I'm doing pe pe hair and makeup with people, you got 15 minutes. 15 minutes hair and makeup, I have no more time. Guess what? JR's like last night, Lauren, it's 4.30. You've got to go to bed. I'm like, you go to bed. I'm cool. You go to bed. Is, this, is the light bothering you? The computer bothering you? What's bothering you? Like, go to bed. Go to bed. But I'm not going to bed. I'll go to bed when I'm dead. I'm going to get it done. Period. My point is use social media. You have no idea if somebody from the UK, Mexico, Taiwan. I'm making sure I'm talking to all my followers. So I make sure that I'm posting day and night. And by the way, if you decide you want to sleep for a couple hours, you can use Social Sprout or Hootsuite and let it automatically post for you and pre-put your post up so you don't have to worry about being awake to post them. Ask people about themselves. I did this for you last night so you could see because I like to be very relevant. Last night I read a question about 2 o'clock in the morning or so. Um, no, no, no. It was about 12.15. I wrote, um, tell me the one thing you love about yourself. I asked everybody. Tell me the one thing you love about yourself. And the point is, I want to get to know them and I want to retweet them. I want to let them know that I actually engage with them. So I don't know these people, but they think I do because I retweeted them. This guy wrote, uh, I, I'm authentically me and nobody can change that. Somebody else wrote my everything. 
I love that I love with all my heart. And I retweeted all these people because I wanted to engage with them. So now they're thinking to themselves, wow, she'll actually talk back. She actually listens. She actually cares what I think. She wants to talk to me. And then the next thing I notice is, within one minute of me doing it, 178 new people follow me. Within one minute. I'm thinking, hmm, you think people want to talk about themselves? They sure do. They sure do. And guess what? I'm up pretty late, so I'm willing to listen. That's the point. And you know what happens? After a while, you see the same people start to retweet you and talk to you. And I'm listening. And before you know it, have you ever met anybody on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever, and you know that they're always following you? And they say, oh, wow, Julie, that's amazing. And Julie doesn't know who you are, but she notices that you're writing something like, oh, and you give her a like. God, Julie, that dress looks so pretty on you. All of a sudden, after the second or third time, Julie says, thank you. Because she starts to realize, hey, this is somebody who's always following me. Pam, I know this must happen to you because you do a lot of social media stuff. So people are commenting and saying, Paul, thanks so much. And you're paying attention to the same people who come back and forth. And what happens? You become friends. You become friends. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So all of a sudden, these people start doing it. I'll let you run through these. Yeah, real quick. Just, you know, just things you don't want to do. This was a perfect example. Kenneth Cole sat there and tried to make light of political warfare by saying that millions are in an uproar based on a rumor that they heard about the new fall um, spring collection now available online. You can't do things like this. Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> uh, um, who is paid to, um, to, um, to promote the Microsoft Surface, she goes over, gotta love that Surface, just bought 12 gifts already um, via Twitter for iPad. Got to watch out for things like that. Did you guys catch that? She was supposed to be promoting another platform and she tweeted from an iPad instead. Right. They caught that. Do you think that? I mean, uh, Alicia Keys is one of my best friends and she was paid by BlackBerry and she, she got caught tweeting from her iPhone. That's right. You know what I mean? People pay attention to that stuff. You know, here's a perfect example. Great content, great photo, everything. This was for not this past year's, but the year before Super Bowl. Great content that Kit Kat did. Problem was, 6 o'clock in the morning, they posted this. One of the teams that was on at 6 a.m. Um, 6, 6 was the San Francisco 49ers, which is 3 a.m. Pacific time. Sometimes even perfect content can be done at the wrong time as well. And then, of course, you have something that wins. Something like Modus Cosmetics and 522,000 followers on our and, Instagram and account. And I did that in five months. Wow. You guys know that. You saw it when it was 1,200 followers. So I wanted to show you what it would be like if I took it upon myself to work it nonstop, and now we're at 522,000 followers, and I guarantee you by next month we'll be at a million. Why? Because when you have momentum, you don't stop. You pick up the pace. Don't rest on your laurels when things get good. Pick up your pace. Have you ever heard of the snowball effect? If you slow it down when you're speeding up, things start to go backwards. I don't want to go backwards. I want to go forward. I want to do more. I want you to help me do more. And we're going to keep doing more. Are we or are we not? Yeah, we are. So we're winning share photos, we talked about all this, right? Yeah. Ask questions, retweet, repost, host contests, tweet about updates, demonstrate wider lead leadership, as Steve said before, and put up important articles that matter to them. Make a difference, comment, repost, comment, repost. What if I went up to you, Steve, and I was like, you know, I saw you at the store and I was like, you know, hey, how are you? I, you know, a nice tie you have on. Hey, how are you? Nice tie you have on. Back up. You wouldn't do that in real life. No. Why would you do it online? If I went up to Steve Natural and I said, hey, how are you? How are you doing, Lauren? I'm doing great. Great, Sue. Great well, thank tie. You. I love that. I'd like to see that we match. I know. Well, by the way, we did not plan that today, we did but not we plan did pretty that. good. You would have a dialogue with somebody you didn't know, right? Somebody you drive to the dry cleaners, you drop off your clothes, the person says hello, you say hello back. 
The same thing happens on social media. And pay attention to the ones who keep commenting and make sure, more importantly, you're the one on the other people's pages that you're trying to get their attention. The ones that you're trying to focus on, the one you're trying to get to see you, comment, post nice things. Wow, that's amazing. I love that color on you. Comment them, comment, comment, comment. Make sure you're constantly commenting because they will take notice. So then when you go in and you ask them for their opinion on what they think about motives, they don't have a problem answering you because you've been talking to them all along. Now, here, you guys, Steve, I'll let you run through this. You know, you know I thing is, is that, <laughs> thing is that when you're trying to find and create business leads, you want to try to start out by thinking about what you're trying to sell, what interests you. And then you want to go find people on social media that are related to that, whether it be potential clients. Look on competitors' pages. Look at industry contacts. Find out the who's who. We're going to actually go through some of this, so I'd rather go through that. Look on groups and fan pages. Think about who motivates you and would you want to be motivated by them and then find individuals that are part of that and then send them personal messages. You know, one of the things that I like to say is that I like to go after groups. I like to try to figure out what I'm on social media for and I then um, become fans of those pages so that I can utilize them. I look for people, whether it be a Robert Kiyosaki, a Grant Cardone, or if I'm in health and, nutri health and beauty, I look for beauty pages, health and nutrition pages. I'm looking at per personal trainers. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find who is relevant to me, and I'm going to become a fan of theirs. But I'm going to limit myself to people that have huge followings, because I only have a certain amount of time when I go on social media to make new friends and to make new contacts. So in order to do that, I got to find people with massive amounts of people. Here's a perfect example. Grant Cardone, 230,000 people. Now think about if you were in one of his seminars, wouldn't you want to be able to talk about the Market America and franchise business to each and every person in that seminar? Of course you would. So therefore, so why not go on to his site and look Look at information. Here was a post that was done on his page. Now, this is one of the responses from it. Balancing the work of business and family time, snatching business opportunities as well as opportunities to appreciate the beauty and life around you. This is somebody who's looking for time freedom. Wouldn't you agree? This is also somebody who, as a massage therapist, wouldn't they like to be a part of whether it be our Nutrimetrics program, whether it be selling nutraceuticals. Here's a perfect person for you to reach out to and just say, hey, I saw your post, you know, on the forum the other day. I couldn't agree with you more. Would you mind if I connect with you on Facebook? Yeah, ask them. Don't and you start just sending them that. links. Connect with people who you aspire to be. Sure. Connect with people who have like likes in you. Connect with other entrepreneurs. Damon John from Shark Tank is in the house today. He's a great friend of mine. And we connect all the time. He knows I live by this, do I not? I connect with people. I want to be friends with Damon. I love Shark Tank. I love him. He's a branding expert. I want to know what he thinks of me. Everybody looks to somebody because they want input. I'm asking you to do the same thing. I'm not afraid to do it. He knows. I ask him all the time, what do you think about this? How do you think I'm doing? What do you think? You want somebody. People are flattered, by the way. Right. Yes, you're getting it. You're getting it, right? People are flattered, by the way, when you ask for their advice. When they hear from you, one of the things I want to do real quick while we run through these fast next slides is, you know, we have an incredible guy. You, you know, everybody know Shane Kringle? I love Shane Kringle. We're going to jump ahead of some of our slides because as usual, I talk way too much. So does Steve. So we have to jump ahead, but don't worry because all the slides will still be there at the end of Unfranchise and we can always talk to you upstairs and answer your, any of your questions. I want to bring Shane out real quick because he does exactly what we say. Right. Shane, can you come out here real quick? A recap of what I've done on Facebook from a recruiting standpoint. So since July 2012, I've added 2,400 followers. Not bad for a guy from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, right? So all on business, 
everything that's relevant to business. In three and a half years, I personally sponsored 59 business owners, 39 of them coming from Facebook messages to me. Of that, also six of the 59 came from LinkedIn messages to me. So 76% of the people I personally sponsored in my business have come from social media. And over the last six months, I've generated almost 155 likes per post. But in July 2012, I was only averaging seven likes per post. So you need to understand it takes time to build your brand, especially if somebody doesn't know who you are. But just like the business, just like building anything, the most important thing you have to do is be consistent. You yeah. can't post one week and then stop posting for three months and wonder why people don't care about what you're talking about. Building your brand on social media is not something that happens, that happens overnight. People will follow you and ask you the golden question. If you post the business tips the right way, what is shop.com? So real quick, I'm gonna show you examples of people who started as messages and became unfranchised owners. Here we go, this is from uh, December 30th of a month ago. Hey Shane, would you be able to just tell me exactly what you do for Market America? Oh, yeah. Seems interesting. Here's the big thing I need you to see. I did not respond right away with what? Market America is the best business in the world. I, why haven't you done it yet? And, and jam Market America down her throat. The first thing that I asked her is, Kelly, how have you been? Haven't seen you in a couple years. Get that conversation going again. They will care so much more because they realize you're not there to just do business with them right away. You actually care about what they're doing and want to know more about how they've been. Then they'll come back and be excited to sit down. And there you can see there's the picture. She registered her business two weeks later. Next guy, Jeremiah Nicholas. Hey, buddy, long time no see. I've been seeing your post a lot lately. I'm intrigued. What is exactly you're doing? Next post from me. I didn't say, hey, I'm doing shop.com. You should be a business owner. Dude, I've been great. More importantly, how are you guys? Still in Wisconsin? A week later, brand new business owner. Judy, that sounds amazing. Good for you. What kind of business are you in? Nicole, okay, I'm thinking Finn and I are ready. Sorry it's taking so long. Again, these are people messaging me. Next slide. All right, how does your business work exactly? People, you know, these are people that are just following. Business owner. Hey, Shane, when do you speak next in Milwaukee? I'd love to hear you. Are you a business owner with shop.com? No, I'm not. All right, became a business owner. Next one. Alex Anderson, my man, appears you're doing big things. Thanks, bro, just working hard and then working some more. Everybody see that? You've been good? All right, how have you been? And then the last one, we just registered Megan last week. Um, nice, why don't you do business with me? Okay, how? What are you doing tomorrow night? She's been talking to me about business for six months, okay? So set up the webinar, did it at a distance. Oh, shay, shay, what shay. is she doing I got right a question. There. Yes. What, this is qualified right here. What, what's, in, what's what she got in her nose? I have no idea. I don't remember that moment. <laughs> 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 I have no idea. Yeah, that's her phone, I think, guys. <laughs> but the point being is. She's like, what is she doing? Everybody's looking at me like, what? What is she doing? She's, I, I have no idea. And. <laughs> But on here, the last thing I want to show, so there's a girl named Elsa in the crowd today. Elsa I met at the marathon. I ran the Miami Marathon. We met at the expo. I added her on Facebook. She said, hey, I just reviewed your page. Would it be possible to speak with you about the business? Sold her a ticket to the World Conference. She's here right now, and she's registering her business tonight. Wow. Right? All from Facebook. So make sure you use it right. Make sure you're branding yourself the right way and listen to everything that Steve and Lauren have told you guys. Stay, stay right here, stay right here. I think, I think um, the most important thing that you saw about Shane's post, which is exactly, exactly, exactly the same thing with us is, when you're doing this the right way, you never have to ask them anything about the business. They ask you. When you're doing everything right, they'll ask you things. I never talk to anybody about getting in my business. I have my friends saying, why don't you tell me about Market America? Why don't you tell me about Motives? Because I'm too busy. And I never talk to my friends about my business. They have to ask me. He did exactly, exactly the same thing. He waits for them. And when you're engaging the right way, you can't stop the amount of messages that are coming through. Is that not true? Yes. And, and the best tip I can give is when you meet somebody in public, you have to do this. You got to have Facebook and LinkedIn. My buddy Josh Delaney and I do this crazy religiously. When I meet somebody, if I meet Lauren, the, if I meet her just real quick, I'm like, hey, Lauren, how, nice meeting you. You know what? I love talking with you and I love adding people to my network that are like-minded. Is it all right if I add you on Facebook? 
Exactly, and Steve mm -hmm. mentioned right. that earlier. And as He's soon as they add me on Facebook, it's over because they see my posts and they automatically at some point then ask me what is shop.com. They're like, dang, this guy, he, he, he just doesn't look good. He actually does pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when they start following him and seeing right. it. But you know, bottom line is there's an ocean out there. There is an ocean out there in social media. It's just a matter of whether you're going to go out there and not have the right tools to not just find the little fish, but to find the sharks out there. Because there's a ton out there. You just got to simply network. You got to communicate. And you got to take everything we do offline. And we got to push it online. You get it? Does that, does that make sense to you guys? All we want you to do is take everything that we taught you here this morning. I wish we had more time, but we're out of time. The point is this. All you have to do is, as Steve said, implement what we do offline, online. This is easy for you. That's why we spend so much time showing you how to do it. Find somebody that you want to be like. Find somebody that likes the same things you like. Go on forums. Go on communities. Share information. Get to know people. Become friends with people online, just like you do offline. That's it, guys. God bless you. We'll see you this afternoon.